The church is built on something. A few years back, there was a, a country music singer named Marin Morris, and she wrote a song that I, I'm sure that you've probably heard before because it played pretty repeatedly on, on country music radio and even on other popular radio stations. It was a song called My Church. Now, in this song, Marin Morris talks about what her version of church is and what her church is built on. She doesn't use those words, but you can get that from the song. And in her words, she talks about church being a place where she feels in her heart a sense of revival, where she feels something. And so for her, that version of church was rolling down the highway with the windows down with her favorite song or singer on the radio and singing at the top of her lungs. That's where she felt something. That's where she felt that sense of revival. And so for Marin Morris, you'd say that her church was built on, on her feelings or on that sense of feeling revival in, in her heart. It's an interesting concept, and it's one that gets you to start wrestling with what the definition of church actually is. Is church something that we can define on our own terms and say, it can mean this and this and this and this. It can mean whatever I want it to mean. Or is church something that we learn about from Jesus in the Bible? And so because we wrestle with some of those thoughts, I want us to devotionally talk about the church for the next few weeks. And today we're going to start with Matthew chapter 16. It's an appropriate place to start because this is the first place where Jesus talks about the church in the New Testament. And he does it in the context of a conversation with the disciples. He starts out by talking to the disciples and saying, who do people say that I am? It's not that Jesus needed any affirmation on who he was. He knew who he was. But he wanted to know what people were saying about him. And he wanted to get a little deeper than that even. And so he asks the disciples that. And, and they respond. Some say Elijah. Some think you're Jeremiah. Some think you're another prophet. And Jesus drills down a little further. And he says, okay, who do you say that I am? To the disciples. Now, Peter often was the spokesperson for the disciples, uh, maybe because he was always the first one to speak, and it was no different in this case. And Peter says this to the question, who do you say that I am? Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. This was Peter's confession of who Christ was. And Jesus says this, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Here we get a little snapshot of what the church is all about. That the foundation of the church, what the church is built on, is not Peter. It's not your feelings. It's not the million other things that we try to make it. We, we try to make it potlucks or buildings or relationships or children's programs or, or, or so on and so on. You can come up with a million different things there. But what makes the church the church is that it's built on Christ. That it's built on the confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Because by believing, you may have life in his name. That the church is all about Jesus, about believing in Jesus, about making Jesus known, about learning more about Jesus and growing in him because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Peter's confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, we pray that that is always our confession and that's always what we seek to build our churches on. Because when we do that, we know that our church is built on a solid foundation.